This is Margot Poro for the BC Learning Network talking to you about division and remainders. Can you model and represent division with remainders? Can you determine when the remainder is important? What does division really mean? Dividing into sets or groups of a certain size or dividing into a certain number of sets or groups. Let's take a look at what this means. 6 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 can mean putting 6 into sets of size 3, meaning 3 objects are in each set. 6 divided into groups or sets of 3 equals 2 sets altogether. 6 divided by 3 can also mean putting 6 into 3 sets. 6 divided into 3 groups or sets makes 2 objects in each set. What about remainders? What do remainders really mean? Let's take a look at 16 divided by 3. 16 divided by 3 can mean putting 16 into sets of size 3, giving 3 objects in each set, and a total of 5 sets with 1 left over. This 1 left over is a remainder. 16 divided by 3 can also mean putting 16 into 3 equal sets, which gives us 5 objects in each set and 1 left over. This is the remainder. Let's take a look at the parts of the division questions with remainders. No matter which way you write it, the parts are the same. The dividend is the number that you start with. The divisor is the number you are dividing by. This can be the size of the sets or the number of sets. The quotient is the answer. And sometimes you have pieces left over and that's the remainder. When you write division using the standard algorithm, you also have the dividend, the number you're dividing, the divisor, which tells you the size of the groups or the number of groups, and the quotient, which is the answer. If there are objects left over, that gives you a remainder. How you interpret this remainder when you are problem solving is very important. The interpretation of the remainder depends on the situation or problem. You have to be able to decide when the remainder is important. Sometimes the remainder can be ignored. Sometimes the quotient needs to be rounded up. Sometimes the remainder can be expressed as a fraction. Sometimes the remainder can simply tell us how much is left over. Let's take a look at some specific examples. Jim and Sue had 40 candies to put into bags for a party. If each bag held six candies, how many bags were filled? And how many candies were left over? Here is the division question. We'll start by putting six in each bag. Six times six is 36. We subtract that, we get a remainder of four. You can see that six bags are filled and four are left over. Sometimes the remainder can simply tell us how much is left over. We don't have to do anything with those four candies except eat them. Here's another example. A team has 13 people, including coaches and players. How many five passenger cars are needed to transport 13 people to a game? 13 divided by five equals two, with three people left over. So car one has five people, car two has five people, and there are the three people left over. Sometimes the quotient needs to be rounded up. Three cars are needed or three people would not make it to the game. This remainder cannot be ignored. Here's another example. Five cookies are shared equally by two people. The key word there being equally. This is a case where the remainder can be expressed as a fraction. Five cookies. Each person gets two whole cookies and one half of a cookie. You take the remainder, move it to the top, and put it over the divisor to make a fraction. 
The divisor becomes the denominator or bottom number in the fraction. Remember, you have to be able to decide when the remainder is important. The key points from this video are that sometimes the remainder can be ignored, sometimes the quotient needs to be rounded up, sometimes the remainder can be expressed as a fraction, sometimes the remainder can tell us how much is left over. Thank you for watching this video on division and remainders.